Okay, so we are going to do a list of the objectively and subjectively best games of 2023. And like I said, this is an objective list and it holds as much weight as the Game Awards. So I am fully expecting like threats, since I'm not going to place Pizza Tower at number one. Uh, you know, the Game Awards is a bullshit show hosted by a man who has no credibility or any like, you know, power over what's the best. So this is an equal, equal show to that. So, you know. Uh, I'm trying to find a picture of Jeff Keighley here. I can I can like put him <laughs> put him on stage because he will be presenting. He will be presenting this what we have here. Let me just uh, make him like uh, transparent. Let's see if I can like. There we go. <laughs> the ghost of Jeff Keighley. <laughs> Amazing. All right, let me put some music on the background. Oddly high resolution, Jesus. <laughs> yeah. All right, uh, let me play some music. Just, uh, here we go, this one will do. Lost ass cursor. All right, guys, without further ado, let me put some text over here and uh, we can, uh, the wait we need a font that you can like take seriously the and subjectively best games of 2023 a list there we go <laughs> Did I know that Geometry Dash 2.2 is out? No, but I know now. Oh no, what? My text is gone. What? what? It didn't save. Okay, hang on. <laughs> the. The. And. Best games of 2023. There we go. And let me add another text. So on my list, we have uh, we have uh, five top five games. We have top five games of the year, and after that, we have some honorable mentions. There we go. <laughs> so let us begin by from bottom to up. Gotta go through this. At number five position, we have. Hang on. Gotta like uh, put images here. Honorable mention. All right, that's a good image. It's a WebP. Okay, how about this one? Okay, there we go. So, at number 5, the best objectively and subjectively game of 2023 is... Mario Rabbit Sparks of Hope. And I know what you might be asking, like, what? That released last year. And my answer to that is, I don't care. I played it for the first time this year, and it was so good! <sighs> You used a different phony? Wait, what did... Wait, what did I use? Different... Oh, font. Ah. For this one. Well, let me fix that for you. For you specifically. There we go. Number five is Mario Rabbids Sparks of Hope. I know it released last year, but I like missed a year of my life due to my hiatus, so I'm counting it here. And the DLC came out this year, yep, so you know that counts. And the Rayman DLC was. Oh. 
You know, I don't need to repeat myself. My reactions are there on the VOD. All around better experience than the first one. Love the music, love the worlds, love the gameplay, love the characters, and of course the Rayman DLC, the return of Rayman. That was uh, amazing. I loved it. <laughs> Bro missed the year of his life. Bro was in coma. <laughs> Is Mario Rabbit in the fifth place because of Rayman? That's partly the reason, yes. That is, yeah, part of the reason. But the base game itself is also amazing. I loved the base game, and if I had to compare the base game and the Rayman DLC, objectively, the base game would be better because, you know, it's the game. It's better. It's the full game. But, you know, Rayman DLC contributes to the fact. So let me just, like, add, add a little mention of Rayman on there. Like so. There we go. There he is. Alright. That's five. There's no more uh, stuff to discuss about that. Let's move on to number four. And number four is... Hang on. Need an image here. Number four, the best, objectively and subjectively, the best game of 2023 was. No straight roads. And I know what you're saying. Hang on, this game released like three years ago, but I don't care. I played it for the first time this year and it was amazing. I loved No Straight Roads. It's like everything I want from a game like that. At first I was afraid it would be like a like a scary hard rhythm game, but no, it was not. It was an amazing colorful game with great music, great story and great surprisingly great gameplay. <laughs> Rise in coma? No. These are real games, guys. You want the bite from the Steam Christmas sale so bad. Oh, I should uh, I should play the Christmas levels of that game. Really amazing. Yeah, that game is just amazing. I think Pep even bought the Sayu plushie because it was on sale while I was streaming this. This game feels like that uh, came out in 2015 to 2018. It has those exact vibes. Yeah, it has like early PlayStation 2 vibes and I really like that. Play the Christmas bosses next year in December. Maybe I will. Maybe I will. You just both help Wonder 2 the other day. Oh shit! Help Wonder 2 is so good! But yeah. I think uh, we can move on then. And. The third place. The. <coughs> the. The. Objectively and subjectively best third game of 2023, guys, is... Five Nights at Freddy's Ruin DLC. Now, Security Breach was my favorite game of... Uh, 21? Was it released in 21? I don't even remember anymore. But the Ruin DLC was released this year and... Oh my god! I bought the car! It is everything Security Breach needed, uh, needed and wanted. It like fixed the main game. It was so good it retroactively fixed the main game. Like that was... Oh my god, just like... That was like perfect. It like, it's, you know, Security Breach but, but better. Security Breach but good. Gameplay was there. The, the characters were there, and even more. And the story... Oh! Don't even get me started on Mimic! <laughs> Brox is better than Freddy, in your opinion? FNAF 9 is bad? <laughs> Why are you guys calling this FNAF 9? Your opinion is subjectively bad? Well, too bad, because this is the objectively and subjectively best games of 2023 list, so I win. <laughs> Alright. 
So yeah, Five Nights at Freddy's, huge Five Nights at Freddy's fan. So it will probably be no surprise that number two of the the best, the objectively and subjectively best game of 2023. The best, second best game is Five Nights at Freddy's Help Wanted 2. Now, now I, I know someone's gonna be like, eh, you can't have two games from the same series on the list, but actually, yes, I can, because they are that good. And Five Nights at Freddy's 2 was amazing. The best VR game I have ever played. So much better than the first one. It, they, they like took everything I liked about FNAF uh, VR 1 and made a whole game about about that. Like only about the things I liked. Oh, and I was actually able to complete it. It was amazing. <laughs> this is just gonna be a FNAF collection list. Well, nothing else, uh, nothing else FNAF released. You can because fuck arbitrary rules exactly. Exactly. FNAF 10! What the hell is FNAF 10? Guys, can't wait for FNAF 69. Yeah, I guess on what number one is. Well, guys. Without further ado, shall we get to number one? The best game of 2023. Let's take a moment of silence. The best. Objectively and subjectively. And I'm not even like kidding here. This is the best. Objectively and subjectively. Yes, so the best game of 2023, objectively and subjectively, is, of course, Sons of the Forest, the sequel to The Forest. <laughs> Let me just uh, tell you guys, Sons of the Forest is like one of the best uh, survival open world crafting games I have ever played. And it is also like the perfect sequel to an already amazing game. <laughs> the Jeff apparition is emerging from common. <clears throat> he looks like heroin, you're right! Okay, but yeah, seriously though. You know how, you remember how like Subnautica Below Zero was the perfect sequel to Subnautica? The Sons of the Forest is the perfect sequel to The Forest. It has everything I want from an open world survival crafting game. The the look, you know, I'm not usually the one to go on about graphics, but my god is Sons of the Forest beautiful. The gameplay, the like slow building your base, collecting wood, and it still doesn't get like annoying. You have the new freaking NPC helpers mechanics, the enemies, and... Oh, the story! Ah, the story! Doesn't get better than that. I had the most fun all year streaming Sons of the Forest. And uh, I wouldn't change it for anything. And I'm really excited to replay it whenever it gets out of, like, open. Uh, I mean, like, uh, early access, whatever it's called. Oh... Survival crafting is actually Rise's favorite video game genre. Genre. It is. It is. There was a time in my life where I was like, 2D platformers are my favorite genre, but it really is open world survival crafting that's my favorite genre. 
Subnautica 3 news next year. I'm so excited. That's gonna be... Oh! Oh! Hold me! Earthquake! Oh! <laughs> Roy forgot to add en en Enchanted Portals. Bad top 5. <laughs> I don't even know what that is. You're so excited to see what Sons of the Forest will be like once 1.0 comes out. Subnautica Real 3? Yes! A new third Subnautica is coming. Or like they're gonna share the first information next year. <laughs> Sons of Kelvin. What are we gonna play? Well, no like a Fortnite. Uh, that brings me to the Honorable Mentions. And let me just put on some music for this. Uh, hang on, what would be good? Here we go. This is uh, the list. But we are here, we are here, she have a We still have uh, the Honorable Mentions. Here we go. <laughs> Mentions. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. Number one. Well, these are not in order. These are just random honorable mentions. We have... Uh... Raymond the Dreamer's Boundary. And I think this really just last year. But I only got to play it this year for the first time. And... Oh! That was amazing. Great 2D platformer and a great Rayman fan game at that. Deserves the spot on the Honorable Mentions list. Then, a surprise thing that I did not expect I would put on the list, but here it is. Mega Man! One, two and three. This encapsulates the first three ones. I was always kind of disinterested in Mega Man, but after streaming Mega Man 1, 2, and 3, I actually really like them. So, they are here. They deserve the spot. Not sure if the series will get better or worse after the, the first three, but we will see. We will see. Then... Hang on. Where is it? Dead. <laughs> Next up on the Honorable Mentions, we have uh, a <laughs> Scroogy Picross. <laughs> no, I'm not biased, but it was a good game and it taught me how to play Picross. So how could I not love it? Of course, it deserves a spot on the list. Our oh, coding Kili. There we go. Let me put it like there. Just a great game overall. And then we also have uh, the, hang on, there, there's an image. On, a, on Omar Ableventions, a surprise hit, the Bunny Graveyard, episode one that I streamed on uh, Halloween. really enjoyed it, even though it was just like the first episode in a, in a saga that is hopefully going to continue next year. And continuing the trend... Oh, hang on. How can I save this image? Okay, there we go. Continuing the trend of Halloween surprises. This demo only lasted for like 20 minutes, but it was the... It stole my heart! And that is 10 dead dubs. And I'm really, really excited to check out the full game whenever that comes out. Hopefully next year, but who knows. Those were the games that I had on the Honorable Mentions list. But let me just quickly go through my stream backlog, or like the games I have streamed, and see if there's something I missed. Something noteworthy, something I should mention. Um, let's see. Something that would deserve to be 
on the list of the honorable mentions. No Lego Fortnite, no. Lego Fortnite fell off. I played it a few times and I was really excited about it, but then it became too grindy and it's like... Um, you can tell it's still in its infancy and I hope it gets better, but right now it does not deserve a spot on the honorable mentions list. You forgot Pizza Tower? Sorry, man. Sorry, man. There is no Pizza Tower on this list. Mm, yeah, it doesn't look like I missed anything. That's pretty much it, I think. Yeah, I think that's it. That is the Honorable Mentions, and we also had the Top 5. You forgot the game that made you cry this year. What was that game? <laughs> That's it. Foot stinks. I'm leaving. You cried at Tears of the Kingdom. Oh, yes. I completely forgot Tears of the Kingdom. Okay. Uh, mm. The difference is that I didn't play it myself. I watched you play it. And even then, I don't think I would put it on here. You know, Tears of the Kingdom was great, but it wasn't like, it didn't shake me to the core, it didn't make me go like... Even if I cried, it didn't make me go like... Well, you know... Didn't shake me to my core. It was still, after all, a Zelda game, and I'm not a fan of Zelda games. But it was still really, really good. But it loses to the games that I had uh, in my top 5. <laughs> Heartless! <laughs> <laughs> Right man, it stinks. I'm leaving. Let me take a drink and we can move on. Unless someone someone has something to say. Though I don't know how you could have anything to say about this objective and subjectively correct list. I shouldn't be this ironically obsessed with Pizza Tower. You don't know why you're like this. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe the game's good. PT is a good game. Ah, uh, yes. I wish I could play PT, but it, you know, it's not. You can't buy it anymore. It's locked on like it was like a PS4 like demo, and I'd have to buy like a PS4 that costs like 500 euros to play PT. I'm not gonna do that. And even the fan remakes aren't like you know that good compared to the original experience. It's a shame, really. It's a shame. <laughs>